Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Uh, welcome to the Just Chatting Gaming News and Trailers for the week of February 18th. There's really not much for news, but there's like a thousand trailers. Literally, we're going to watch a thousand trailers. Matt Caruso in chat says we have to, so it's going to be like a very, very long video. Actually, there was one piece of news. If there's any big fans of uh, Civilization, the Firaxis devs announced that they're already working on the next game. Personally, I hope it's not just another normal Civilization game. I hope they they do like another shot at like sci-fi. But who's to say? All right, jumping into trailers. There's a lot of games coming out right now. And so we have the official sort of launch trailer, story trailer for Wild Hearts. Let's check it out. All worldly things will sink to hell. This game's getting good reviews. For nature, except for on Steam. Until there's some, the last there's some PC uh, performance issues that are supposed to get fixed uh, this week. So we'll see. But other than that, it's getting great reviews. Long ago, a great disaster befell our land. Today, the signs are everywhere. Our home, Minato, will fall if we do not intervene. And for those who don't know, this is a Monster Hunter style game. But Minato is merely the name of our village. A village is its people. Minato is Natsume, the blacksmith forged by love and loss. Ujishige, a former soldier forced to confront his past. Seren, whose loyalty holds the whole town together. And Minato is Suzuran, our resident scientist. and other allies will be crucial to your victory. Together with the help of the ancient Karakuri and as many brave hunters as we can muster, we must protect our homeland from catastrophe, restoring the celestial thread that binds us all. We have no choice but to face the fearsome kimono when they threaten our home. In defeat, these noble beasts give up their celestial thread so that we may weave them to our own purposes. But as the kimono evolve, so too must we. A lot of really crazy creatures. Hunters have vowed to find and defeat them. None have been so fortunate. Now is your chance. Triumph over the kimono. Launch the, the Protect bricks. Our village and our people. And you will become a legend. The hunter who tames a world gone wild. Yeah, I've um, I've heard some people say they actually like that game better than uh, Monster Hunter. So, yeah, very very cool. Uh, next up, another new game that just came out. This is the launch trailer for The Settlers, which I believe this is a remake of an old game from Ubisoft. One of these uh, city builder type games.
So I will say the crazy thing about this game, and again, this is so very Ubisoft, there are games out there that are essentially doing the same thing as this game for literally half the price. They, they are charging full price for a city builder. And when you include tax and all that, it's like a 63 to $65 game. And to me, it's that's... Oh, and it has microtransactions. So, again, every Ubisoft game has microtransactions. So that's uh, that seems a little steep to me. Yeah. Next up, a uh, game that comes out this week. We have the overview trailer for Blood Bowl 3. Let's take a look. Blood Bowl is the legendary game of fantasy football where the rules change, sponsors chase the best teams and star players, and new competitions emerge. But what has actually changed for you with the release of Blood Bowl 3? In the single player mode of Blood Bowl 3, an agent decides to take you under his wing and give your team financial backing. This means you can recruit players and enter the clash of sponsors by competing against the best teams in the old world. This competition brings together the best teams sponsored by the most influential brands, and the players include the biggest stars like the legendary Griff Overwall. As some of you already know, 12 factions will be available at launch. Some are already well known, like the Dwarves and Dark Elves, but brand new factions have also been added, such as the Imperial Nobility, Old World Alliance, Chaos Renegades, and of course, the Black Orcs. Many others will be added later, and all will be available in the campaign mode. A Kraken unbearable heat, insect swarms, the new dynamic pitches hold many surprises. In certain situations, these pitches transform during the match and change the rules depending on the scenario. For example, if you score a touchdown in the first half on the Dark Elves pitch, the crowd will cheer, which wakes up a monstrous sea creature that will rage for the whole of the second half. Be careful with your players. You will need to adapt your game because they're more likely to fall and will have trouble getting back up. Blood Bowl 3 is based on the new rules of the board game. The biggest change is undoubtedly the introduction of the passing statistic. Passing the ball is no longer linked to a player's agility, but to a player's passing ability instead. Huh, okay. Catching the ball is still based on agility. Some players don't even have passing ability, which means that if they try to pass the ball, they will automatically fail, but they can still hand off the ball to an adjacent player. This significantly changes the game in many ways, especially for teams with high agility who could previously pass to anyone in their team. New rules means new tactics and new ways to dominate your opponent. You will also find new skills such as defensive, which allows the player with the skill to counter the guard skill. This changes strategies in many ways as guard is one of the key defensive skills. Throwers and runners also have their share of new skills. There's running pass, which allows you to continue an action after making a quick pass and safe pair of hands, which allows the player with the ball to place the ball on any square if they're KO'd. The player leveling up system has also been completely redesigned. Simply put, it provides much more flexibility and spreads out level increases within the team oh, really as nice. the cost increases with each level. It's now more desirable to keep a certain level uniformity within your team to avoid paying exorbitant XP to upgrade your favorite player. In addition, choosing a random skill is half the cost of choosing a specific skill, and increasing a characteristic like strength or agility is expensive. There are many other new features in Blood Bowl 3, such as player and team customization, the arrival of a season system, or unique models of star players, for example. All these new features will help each coach stand out from the crowd, with new mechanics that enable new tactics, new pitches, and lots of factions. You can therefore flaunt your own distinctive style in the old world during the clash of sponsors and against other players in multiplayer modes. Yep, I will be streaming this game this week. We'll be taking a look at it. Uh, we're also doing a league. So if anybody in chat is interested in joining our, our league, we are looking for a, uh, a few more players. So yeah, should be fun. And again, for, for those who may not know, that game is essentially D&D &D football with the Warhammer universe. So pretty, uh, pretty cool. I played quite a bit of uh, Blood Bowl too. All right, next up, we have the gameplay overview trailer for Scars Above. Let's take a look. Hello, Dr. 
Dr. Ward. This used to be a beautiful world. Until it was destroyed. My head! Did the Metahedron bring us here? Since the dawn of humankind, our species has gazed toward the skies and wondered whether we were truly alone. Six months ago, we got our answer. The whole world is relying on us. Let's do this. The Metahedron's energy levels are rising. Power supply failure. Hermes is being pulled towards it. Hang on, everyone. Your friends are trapped just as you are. If you want to make it home, you must uncover the secrets of this place and face its dangers. Oh my god! Kill it with fire! Your curiosity will guide you forward. For inside every plant and creature hides the key to your power. There's the brain. The deuterocerebrum seems to be generating an enzyme used to create a cryogenic fluid. So if I take a sample, I might be able to replicate the process. Your tools are your weapons. Each one that you create will help you defend and destroy. <gasps> your cunning will defeat your enemies. So plan your attacks carefully. The giant yeti just wanted a hug. It's a puzzle you must solve to survive. Now's my chance. It's infesting the water. This knowledge I bestow is but the beginning. You must become stronger. You must journey further. You must prepare yourself for what is yet to come. Yeah, this is a game that I've been tracking a long time. Looks really good. It's coming out February 28th. Cool stuff. Yeah, hopefully that one's good. Uh, next trailer. This one was a little bit of a surprise. I just discovered this trailer today. And I'm a little bit unsure as to why they're even doing this. So this is a trailer for City Skylines, but apparently they're doing a remaster of the whole game or something. Let's take a look. I mean, the game already is, like, the best city builder out there. It looks great. I'm very curious as to why they had, are going to remaster it. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I'll, I'll play that again. It's a great game. Is there a date for this? Apparently not. Huh, weird. Next trailer is for a game that we have seen before. It's been a while. Uh, and maybe I shouldn't tell you guys what this one is. Maybe we'll just play the trailer. Let's take a look. We have a new target. What is it this time, El Dorado? The Fountain of Youth? Let me guess. The Falcon Horde of Venus? The UNN Urshanabi. Cap believes there's something valuable on board. Something special. 
Do we want to invite that kind of attention? We'll be fine. In and out. No games. I'll monitor any data you send back, and I'll be here to patch anyone up, should it come to that. What happened? Oh, I'll explode the charge, I think. Pirates must have left it behind. Pachang, you didn't scan first? Commanders, this is Private Ensign Takabe. The pirates have asked me to report the following. All crew members have been killed uh -oh. or captured. The pirates do not wish to kill anyone else. If you open the gate now and allow them to complete their search, no more lives will be lost. If you do not comply... Oh, oh God, no. Please, don't! Drummer, his suit is punctured and losing pressure. You need to release the vault and patch him now or he could die. Slay that. That vault has O2, fuel. We can't afford to lose it. Where are you going to go, Kamina? Anywhere but here. With anyone but you. I've never watched this series, so I don't know anything about it. You are many things, Beltaloda. But you are not a traitor. Oh, we got choices. Oh. Hold on. Oh. What are you doing? The Expanse Telltale series. Yeah, cool stuff. All right, next up we have two trailers for the same game. This is for a game that is very highly anticipated, but we haven't seen a trailer in a while. So we have the official gameplay trailer of Lies of P. Let's take a look. I gotta ask, is there anybody in chat who has not seen this game? Finally, we meet, son. The stage is set. <laughs> the light shines brightest in the darkest of times. All right, buddy, I'm here for you. We'll uh we'll watch we'll watch the second trailer and then I'll tell you what you're looking at here. No, th this game was announced uh like last year and there's already been some like incredible trailers. Like the trailer we just watched is not the best trailer that we've seen for this game. But yeah, we'll watch the second trailer and then I'll tell you guys what you're actually seeing. Cuz when I tell you what you're actually seeing, it's going to blow your mind. So here's trailer number 2. Loud. A fool craves acceptance, and I am no fool. Let 
The masses chatter their empty praises. They're ignorant of the truth. Blind to my vision. Is it not magnificent? This blessing for those who dare seize it. This key to a new paradigm, a new world. This moment to silence the fools forever. This is Ergo. <laughs> Soon they'll praise me if they dare speak at all. Hmm, okay. This is supposed to give us a release window? Oh, August. Okay. So, since there's a bunch of people in chat who are just seeing that game for the first time, let me bring up the good trailer for that game. And then uh, then we'll, uh, like I said, we'll discuss um, what that actually is. So, this was the trailer that came out... When was this? Two months ago when it was, uh, I think, announced officially. And this was the trailer where everybody was like, Oh my god, this game could actually be incredible. So let's take a look. Hopefully this is the correct trailer. Can you hear me? I think it is. I hope this reaches you. This city is falling apart. Chaos. Madness. Death. And there might be and just to pause it here for just a second, uh, I believe this is coming out for every system. And from what you guys have seen so far, it's a steampunky action game, right? But you can change that. It depends on the choice you make. Truth. Or lie. Some of these are the same shots we just saw. But I don't have a choice. Only you can do this. Please help me. So I'm going to stop just for a second here, and I'm, I'm going to give you a clue as to what this is. This guy right here, his name is Geppetto. Finally, we meet, son. The stage is set. <laughs> the light shines brightest in the darkest of times. All right, buddy, I'm here for you. The lantern would be Jiminy Cricket. Don't worry.
fulfill. The Lies of Pinocchio. So you're Your playing destiny. Pinocchio. Is there more to this trailer? Oh, that's right. If I remember correctly, this is some Pinocchio reference that I don't remember. But yeah, a dark steampunk action combat Pinocchio game. Yeah, very, very cool. All right, next up we have another brand new trailer for Marvel's Midnight Suns. This is going to be the Venom DLC. Let's take a look. Hey, everybody, we are back with another superhero showcase in collaboration with Marvel and 2K. If you've been following the Midnight Suns Twitter account, which you should be, uh, you already know who it's going to be. Today's showcase is about a rather complex character, the iconic symbiote from the Marvel Universe. A truly villainous personality, if I do say so myself. Today we're focusing on one of Spider-Man's biggest concerns in the Midnight Suns early game. Let's take a deep dive into Venom. A demonically possessed symbiote? With a vampire's bloodlust. Contrary to other heroes that have special meters in Midnight Suns, Venom's comes in fully loaded out the gate. His Ravenous charges are going to increase his base offense by 17% each, and he starts each battle with three. He's a pretty bursty character with a big damage bonus at the beginning of each encounter, but his Ravenous meter decreases with each Venom attack or heroic played, then refills a bit each turn. To maximize his damage potential, you're going to need his skill cards, and you'll want to carefully consider the order that you play his abilities. Even without the damage bonus though, Venom still remains a threatening presence on the battlefield with just generally strong attack abilities. First up, let's take a look at his rare Lethal Embrace attack card. Now it's his highest damage attack card and with max Ravenous stacks, you'll be clearing the troublesome enemies with ease. At its base level, not only do you get the benefits of your Ravenous stacks, but if the target is at full health, you get a 1.5x offense multiplier. Now, 1.5x of your max Ravenous offense, that's a lot. Enemies go bye-bye. At upgrade, you remove the enemy health requirement, and you ensure that you benefit from the 1.5 offense boost every time. Now, I'm sure Venom will ultimately end up being a very sweet and lovable personality, and I can't wait to get to know him more at the Abbey myself. I personally guarantee that he'll 100% love us because, according to my research, and according to him, he only hates dot, 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 spiders you probably knew that if you fancy yourself a venom buddy you'll be well rewarded in the passives department uh, building his friendship levels will result in unlocking the we are venom passive at level one it's a 25 percent chance for venom attack cards to not consume a ravenous stack and if you increase that to level two the first venom attack card played each encounter will not consume a ravenous stack either very nice good percentages there Moving on to one of Venom's epic skill cards, let's talk about what I consider to be a core Venom card and one of the stronger ability upgrades in the entire game. It's called Insatiable Hunger. At its base level, you're gaining one Ravenous instantly, and then on the next turn start, you're gaining an additional Ravenous to what you would earn normally. Generally, you're gonna wanna play this when you're planning to end your turn. With I don't one think Ravenous I would really use less, Venom very much. But you guys are gonna love this. The upgrade to Insatiable Hunger adds free yeah very few cards in midnight suns upgrade into a free card play so make sure that you've got skill essences and epic blueprints ready to go i'm also curious if you think about the mods in midnight suns 
Let me know some of the skill card mods that you might be hunting for that would pair really well with Insatiable Hunger, knowing that it's already going to go to free on upgrade. I think there's some really cool possibilities here. As a side note here too, you can stack the benefit of this card, uh, but you're going to be stacking the duration of it, not the effectiveness. I'm going to save his other skill card for the end because reasons. So next up, let's look at Venom's rare heroic ability. It's called Devouring Strike. Who doesn't love a good chain attack? I know I do. This is particularly good at max ravenous stats. Chain attacks are the best kind of attacks. Obviously. But the card upgrade is juicy too. Here's a couple reasons this card is strong. First, it's a chain four attack. Those are pretty rare as is. But second, the upgrade to this card adds on KO, this does not consume a ravenous. That's pretty major. You just make sure that one of your chains is a minion and you're in damage dealing, non-ravenous, reducing business. Laughing all the way to the Abbey, I guess, in this case. He's got two other heroics as well, an epic and a common, but I'm not gonna spoil those here. So, wait, where's his legendary heroic card then? Well, funny you should ask, dear viewer. As I alluded to earlier, Venom has the first Midnight Suns legendary ability that's a skill card and not a heroic. It's called really? Assimilation. In addition to how powerful the card is, the other implication here is that it's generating heroism instead of spending it. Huh. So how does that work? Assimilation reads, Venom's attacks and heroics gain quick and on KO, draw a Venom attack or heroic card until the end of the turn. Of course, it also has everyone's favorite word tagged at the end, exhaust. That, my friends, is what I like to call bonkers. This can allow Venom to go on some pretty intense streaks if you got the right cards at the right time and if you're planning correctly. There are also some abilities in his kit that prevent Venom attacks from consuming Ravenous. So you can kind of see where that's going, but I'll let you guys figure it out when you see all his cards. The upgrade to Assimilation grants Venom one Ravenous on play, just in case you weren't in tip-top shape to begin with. So that brings us to the end of our second DLC hero deep dive. Hope you guys are looking forward to bringing Venom along with your own squad based on what you saw today. As always, make sure you check out the Midnight Suns YouTube channel as well as my own at youtube.com slash Christopher. Out of all the new uh, DLC characters that are coming, Storm is the one I'm most interested in. Okay, so we'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> all right, settle down, Venom. All right, we still got four trailers left. Uh, next up, we have a new trailer for Redfall. So let's take a look. Something wicked dark is coming. They took over the hospital almost immediately. Like they planned it. You sent people to Avon. Folks out there are dead because of what you did. They took my child. The sun. Is it only covered up here? Or is it dark everywhere else, too? You know what happened at the shelter. You think that can't happen here? Is this DMCA music? Hopefully this game is good. I don't know though. It's oh, shit. No. it's gonna be a wait and see. Coast Guard station got taken over pretty quick. Everyone scattered. 
We gotta get out there, grab some supplies, and help people get through this mess. Everybody knows it's over! Everybody except you! There seem to be warring factions. There's no way off the island anymore! Red Star belongs to them! May 2nd. Be on Game Pass. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to do some co-op with that game. I think that's going to be a, a really good, like, multiplayer um, experience. You can play it by yourself, but I think that'd be a better uh, team game. All right, next up we have got a trailer for... And, and this was another game that we've seen pop up a couple times. I believe this game has shown up at a couple of the PlayStation conferences in recent years. So this is the overview trailer, so let's take a look. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Crifo, game director on Chia. Let me show you some of the really cool locomotion abilities and traversal options that we built to make I think this is the, the game where you can turn into animals. And rewarding. This is a game about exploration, so it was super important for Kinda us like that moving around Pixar was movie. intuitive, responsive, but also deep enough to stay engaging throughout the whole game. In Chia, you are not bound to design routes and areas. You can climb any surface organically, even at weird angles, and carve your own path through the islands. You can use the terrain's verticality to your advantage by sliding down slopes, and use your glider to cover long distances and break your falls. Very well, Breath of the Wild-esque. Taking hits and performing intense activities will drain your stamina, but you can upgrade it by finding magical fruits around the archipelago. All foliage in the game is physics-based. Swaying on trees and catapulting yourself through the air is an efficient way to cover long distances. Huh. In Chia, you'll spend a lot of time in the air, so why not add a bit of style to it? You can do spins and flips, and even dives, if you're precise enough. We wanted to emulate the excitement of getting lost into a rich, unknown world. This is why we designed our map system without a player marker. We think this encourages observation and exploration and makes finding your way around the archipelago much more rewarding. Chia can help you by guessing her general location and using orientation signs will narrow down your position, forcing you to explore and interact with the world around you. To cover greater distances across the archipelago, you can use your trusty boat. It is easy to sail but still requires you to be active as you need to manage both your sail and steering paddle. And while exploring, you will also find docks that unlock fast travel destinations to let you get around the world faster. Oh yeah, Let's here's the animal into thing. Let's one of the okay. game's most unique mechanics, Chia's soul jumping ability that allows you to take control of any object or animal in the game world. Early in the game, Chia discovers that she has unique soul jumping powers. Her left eye starts glowing and she is able to warp into nearby objects and animals. Some objects have different characteristics. For example, explosives can be super useful during combat, especially when used alongside soul throwing, a mechanic that lets you aim and shoot an object towards the target while oh, gaining control neat. of Chia on the spot. It's up to you to be creative and discover fun ways to use objects. Soul jumping into animals is also super powerful. Most of them have unique abilities that can help you with traversal, exploration, or are just great fun. <laughs> Using your soul jumping abilities will deplete Chia's soul meter, and more intense activities will drain it faster. You can upgrade it permanently by consuming super rare fruits that will add a slot to your soul meter, and doing so, as well as progressing through the story, will unlock the full potential of Chia's soul jumping powers. Spring. All right, two more trailers. We have us a, an official combat gameplay overview trailer for Witchfire. And again, this was another one that we've seen many a times that showed up at the E3 style uh, events. So here we go. I feel like we haven't seen this one in a while. Hi, my name is Adrian Chmielasz, and I am the creative director at The Astronauts. 
In this video, I want to show you how guns work in Witchfire. When you get a new gun, it's just a dead piece of metal. Let's take this hand cannon, called Hunger, as an example. It works as expected, can get the job done, but there is nothing special about it. Well, that's because its true power is hidden from mere mortals. All guns have powerful magic inside them, but only the witch hunters can access it. Let's see that in action. Hunger feeds on critical hits. Reloading it will give you as many extra powerful bullets as critical hits before the reload. So, for example, here I score three critical hits, then I reload, and now the first three bullets from the new clip have extra power. Huh, okay. But that's just the first level of the hunter's attunement with the gun. The second level makes the gun even more powerful because that extra strength of bullets is no longer a flat increase. Now it also depends on the number of critical hits before the reload. Here is me scoring a critical hit, reloading and firing that new extra strength bullet at another enemy. Nope, that was not enough to kill him. But now let's see what happens if I score, say, three critical hits, reload, then shoot the same enemy. There we go, this time just one bullet was enough. As you can see, this particular weapon is one for an eagle eye hunter because it can only sing if you hit your crits. But when you do hit them, you become a powerful, evil killing machine. And that's how the gun magic works in Witchfire. Thank you for watching, and by the way, yes, there's also the final third level of attunement. And in the case of Hunger, it can do things like this. Freeze him. We have a day for this game? No, I don't think so. All right, final trailer of the day is a big game that everybody's looking forward to. We have us a brand new trailer for Diablo 4. Sanctuary was never meant for humankind. It was forged as a refuge from the war between the high heavens and the burning hells. Instead, it became a new battleground in this eternal conflict. A secretive group called the Haradrim has kept Haradrim scrolls. But now this once powerful order is a husk of what it was, and Sanctuary's ancient creators have returned to claim the hearts of humankind. This is the story of their downfall. Guy's gonna die.
bad place, my dude. Oh, is this, is this guy gonna be like a druid or something? Or we're not. Okay, then. <laughs> Part of a uh, cinematic. All right, cool. Crazy. All right. Yeah, so there you go, uh, ladies and gentlemen. For those who are watching on YouTube, that's all the trailers for today. So thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.